Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics with a slightly different video for you today. So everybody knows I love hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places like flea markets and yard sales, but I also like going to local comic book stores, especially in the colder winter months when we don't have flea markets around here. And basically, I travel a lot. And whenever I go anywhere, I do a quick search of local comic book stores, I go in, film some footage, buy some comic books, and then I bring them back here to share them with all of you. And I love doing this because I love bringing attention to these awesome comic book stores. I mean, it's hard to own a small business, guys, especially a comic or a collectible store. So if I can help in any small way, shape, or form in bringing attention to these cool places, I'm always happy to do so. Well, that's exactly the kind of video we have today. I went to a local comic book store, uh, filmed some footage, uh, and bought some really cool comic books. But I did something a little bit extra. See, I met the owner, and he actually invited me back to give me a tour of the store and do a quick interview on owning a comic book shop. Now, this isn't something I've ever done in the past and not something I really intend to do a lot of in the future. But for reasons that may not be immediately apparent, I feel quite strongly about promoting this store a little bit more than usual but I'm gonna have to explain those reasons. So first, go check out the footage of me being in this awesome comic book store and looking at great comic books, and then a quick interview with the owner, Nick. And then I'll meet you back here afterwards and I'll explain exactly why I feel so passionate about promoting the store, trying to get people through their doors and buying comic books. So check out the footage, guys, and I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics. I'm in Danvers, Massachusetts, the town I grew up in, at Nick's Comic Strip. It's a fantastic comic book store. Let's go check it out.
So hey guys, this is kind of a cool situation. So I'm here at Nick's Comic Strip in my hometown of Danvers, Massachusetts. I bought some really cool books. I went home and I wanted to show them off to you guys. However, I got to meet Nick and we got to exchange some information and we, I talked about my channel and he showed me the store. And about a week after that, he gave me a call and he invited me back to the store to check it out. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the Nick. Hey, Chico! <laughs> Look at this. It's not just comics, it's toys, it's collectibles, it's everything. Let's get right into it, because this guy's got to get home, he's got to rest. All right. This so is your shop. Okay, it's about 2,000 square feet on the floor. We got it all. Comics, collectibles, toys, statues, anime, NECA, Marvel, DC, Star Wars, you name it, we got it. Old, new, got it. In between, <laughs> got it. Hot Wheels, got it. Comic Wall, got it. Brian Nadeau, got it. <laughs> Vintage wrestlers, all of it. We got a trade paperback section back here. Oh, yeah. For all you trade and hardcover lovers. There we go. Okay? Or maybe, maybe you're a vinyl guy. Maybe you like to get down. You like to, you like to rock and or roll. We got disco balls. We got, uh, uh, we're doing stuff. Okay? <laughs> this is the premier shop on the North Shore, folks. If you are up in the North Shore area and you're not here, I don't know where you are. Because you're not here. The one thing I will say, like, listen, not just because I'm here, it's my hometown, and he invited me back, but I've been to lots of comic book stores, you guys know that, and when I first walked in here, guys, I couldn't believe the layout of this place, you know, I, I was just drawn in immediately. In fact, you can tell, the footage I show when I walked in is like a two-minute solid take, because, you know, like, the structure, the layout of this place is really nice, the lighting's great, and every case just kind of draws you in. I mean, there's so much to see, but it's not cluttered, and one of the things I see in a lot of these places is just clutter and it's a lot to look at, but... We don't like clutter. Nah, it's beautiful. It's, honestly, it's a beautiful store. You guys have done Thank a really so great much. job. I appreciate yeah. it. How man. long have you guys been open for? So we've been here, this location, a few years, three years. We started in Middleton in 2016. Um, and yeah, now we're here. Uh, nice. And uh, you like owning a comic book store? I do, you know. It's a little different now than it would have been for me trying to do this 10, 15, 20 years ago. Right. You know, between the internet, COVID, and oh, yeah. everyone wants to be a seller and whatnot now it's a little different well that's what uh, i was gonna ask a lot of people on like my commenters always say like their dream job is owning a comic book store and any small business has to be different then you wake so. up and you're like oh this is a nightmare because <laughs> like it's not it's fun well, don't get me wrong it's fun but it's just a business like anything else you know right. what i mean you got customers you got overhead you got trends you got to watch you got bills i mean those things don't mm -hmm. go away just because you're dealing with comic right. books you know what i mean what's um, your favorite part of owning a comic book store it's got to be pretty fun in some ways couple things dealing with the littles i like oh I like yeah taking care of little kids they get excited i like mm -hmm. seeing that um and then getting to be able to see new product i like new toys and vintage stuff i'm a big vintage guy i like vintage toys so like when i can get my hands on stuff you know it's still like oh, yeah. to me for sometimes i mean we've handled i would say four or five flags in this place since i've mm -hmm. opened Wow. Probably like a one a year. Yeah. So like that's kind of fun. Prior to that, I've never seen one in person. And listen, as long as that door keeps opening and people are coming through, then we're gonna be here. Awesome. When that day stops, then yeah, we'll close it up. Another thing I also noticed, and I can't believe uh, this is honestly completely true. Again, I go to lots of comic book stores, and you know, you have some great back issues here, um, but you also have some uh, you know great Silver Age books up near oh, the front. Yeah. And your prices are fantastic. Like, honestly. I like, didn't hear what you said. What was that? Your prices are excellent. They really are. No. We price them where they're supposed to be. We offer a points reward program. Yep. You know? And if you're a sub, you get 20% off. You pair it with the points program, you're talking 30% off. Right. Yeah. And listen, I know there's other shops that may do more, but that's if they give you the discount at the register. Right. At the end of the day, like, this is the premier service shop. Yeah. We're a little rough around the edges, but that's, you know, act a fool, you're going to find out, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, speaking of the uh, the discounts, you actually gave me a stack of 20% off coupons to hand out, and I've been giving them out to everybody in Massachusetts that I know who is a comic book collector, and you so have a lot of come on in and spend them. I want to meet you. I want to meet you and find out how you know this guy, and we can all talk, and we can have fun. Yeah. So if anybody bumps into me at a flea market, which happens all the time now, or a comic book show, I will have those coupons on hand, so you can head on over to Nick's Comic Strip and spend them. Pretty cool. Let's go, guys. Now, you guys do comic book shows... Yep. What's the next one you're doing? Uh, we got Wicked Comic Con coming up the 22nd, 23rd. Uh, after that, I think I'm going to try and get into the vintage toy show that Dominic Coat does up in Kittery. We'll see. That's in June. Um, we're going to have our own store events coming up, too. We hope to do a Cars and Comics and Coffee event this summer. So if you're not following Nick's Comic Strip on Instagram or Facebook, get on it because you're missing out. And yeah, I mean, that's it. Awesome. Well, I will absolutely be at WicketCon. Um, in fact, when this video premieres, it should be the next weekend coming up after that. So oh, if cool. you guys are going to be at WicketCon in Boston, Massachusetts, make sure you stop by their booth.
Cool. All right, buddy. Hey, this is really fun. Thanks for inviting me back. 161 to 167, right at the entrance when you walk in the powerhouse booth. Let's go. Awesome. That's great. Well, I got some great books here, guys. I'm going to go back to my house, my normal basement spot, and show you guys these awesome Silver Age books that I got. <laughs> So there you go, guys. That was Nick's comic strip in Danvers, Massachusetts. And listen, there are a ton of reasons why I would want to talk about this store on my channel. You heard it in the clip. All of that was true. It's in the town I grew up in. It was a beautiful store, just great presentation, awesome stuff. Not just the comic books, but all the vintage toys, you know, especially the stuff from the 80s, you know, gave me all sorts of nostalgia feels. The comic books were great. And yeah, the prices really were as good as I pointed out in that clip. But none of those are the reasons why I really want to talk about this store. So you guys just got to meet Nick, the owner, and you could tell he's a very high energy guy. He has a really good sense of humor. We were goofing off the whole time. And uh, I've interacted with Nick exactly three times. The first time was when I first went in that store. You know, I walked in, you know, I held my camera up and uh, he just asked, hey, are you like a blogger or something? And I told him who I was. I said, no, I'm a YouTuber and I like to show off cool comic book stores. And it was great. He loved the idea of that. And we talked a lot about the channel. I asked him about his store. And uh, he was like, you know, thanks so much for doing this. You know, if you're going to talk about the store on your channel, let me give you some stuff. Now, guys, listen, people do this all the time. You know, if they want to promote their store, they kind of give out stuff or they want you to talk about them. But let me show you what he gave me, right? So first thing he does is he takes out a stack of these, right? These are 20% off coupons. And um, this is about half of what he gave me. He gave me about 50 of these things. And he spent about 10 minutes writing down LMC on every single one of them. And he handed them to me and he said, Whenever you're out at flea markets or comic book shows, hand these out. They're 20% off for whoever comes in the store. And because I wrote LMC on it, I will know they came from you. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I mean, the prices were already good and 20% off. Fantastic. And then he actually applied this to the comic books I was buying that day. So that was pretty cool. And then he said, hey, if you see any kids, give them these. And he gave me a whole bunch of these Nick's comic strip stickers. He actually gave me a lot more than this. I've been handing them out to any kids I bump into at comic book shows. Uh, I thought that was really cool. He loves doing things for kids and, you know, giving giveaways. So he gave me a whole bunch of these. And then we were talking uh, about the fact, you know, I do stuff with my son and he's on my channel. And he said, hey, give him this. And he gave me this little magnetic pin, which is actually really cool um, to give to my son, Jack. So I had a great impression of this guy already, but then he said, hey, I have an idea. Let's exchange information and uh, maybe we'll do something, some sort of promotional event. Next time you're here, we'll do something cool. And I said, sure, you know, and we exchanged contact information. And then I didn't really think much of it. You know, I planned to come home and talk about the books I bought and that was it. And maybe the next time I'm in Danvers, I'd stop in and say hi. Well, a few weeks later, he contacted me and we spoke on the phone and he was very eager to sort of do a promotion because coming up soon was Wicked Con in Boston, Massachusetts. You see, I have my tickets right here. It's going to be next weekend, the weekend of April 22nd and 23rd, 2023. Um, and they were going to be set up there. And because I was going and he was going, we figured we would do some sort of cool event. So we planned for me to go there on a day and a time where he could give me a tour and do an interview. But during that phone call, we didn't just talk shop. We talked about each other. We talked about, you know, my channel some more. We talked about his store. He told me sort of his philosophy in running a store, how it's all about the customer, you know, experience and satisfaction and his rewards program and how he does things for kids. And I was just very impressed by him. Um, just, you know, the way he sort of thought of running his business, um, but also just as a person. I liked him. So, Finally, the day comes where we were supposed to meet at that aforementioned time and day to do whatever we were doing. We didn't really know what we were doing. And I, I walk in and Nick isn't there. So I talked to one of his employees, Chris, and uh, he's like, hey, man, I'm sorry. He's uh, running late. He had a family engagement he's stuck at. And then he has a meeting right after this. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to have time. I'm like, oh, that's a bummer. But hey, listen, you know, I'm a father. I know these things come up. Things happen. Um, so they called him uh, and I was on the speakerphone with him. He felt really bad. He apologized. He's like, have have uh, my buddy Oscar walk you around. And I, I feel really bad. We'll do something later. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. So I talked to this guy, Oscar, a really cool guy. He actually showed me he has an Instagram account himself where he talks about comic books and shows them off, including ones he's found at antique stores. And I ended up talking with Oscar for quite a while. So long, in fact, that when we were finally ready to film our segment, in through the door walks Nick, and he had basically raced over to try to catch me, and he did. But he had another meeting coming up really soon. So he's like, all right, let's do this. Let's go right now. So we just did it in one take. That was the clip you guys saw. We didn't talk about it beforehand. We certainly didn't plan out like where to stand. I didn't really pick a good place to stand and film. I should have picked one of the cool backdrops, and you guys could tell I framed it terribly. Like, I didn't know where to stand. We just winged it and went for it, and that's how it came out. So after that, you know, he shook his hand and said, hey, that was really fun, and he went off to his meeting. 
End of story, right? That should have been the whole video. Well, here's the thing. When I was waiting for Nick, right, I went over to those back issues and I was just kind of idly going through them and found a few more comic books. And you heard it right in that footage. You know, not only are his prices cheap, but they were having a 50% off sale. And I'm not sure if that's a permanent thing or if that was just a one-time thing, but the prices were already cheap and they were 50% off. So I go to the front counter to check out and I'm just casually talking to this guy, Chris, up there. And I say, man, I don't know how you guys make money. I mean, the books are cheap and they're 50% off, you know? And Chris just casually says, oh yeah, and that's not even taken into consideration, you know, the money he gives to charity. And I said, wait, what? He's like, oh yeah, uh, every year Nick picks a different charity and a percentage of his proceeds from all the back issues, he donates. So last year it was to an Alzheimer's foundation and this year it's to a pancreatic cancer research foundation. Wait, what? Guys, I've never heard of a comic book store doing something like this. I mean, we had just talked about how hard it is to run a small business, a comic book store, and this guy is taking a part of his profit every year to donate to a special charity. And in the three times I met Nick, at no point in time did he ever mention that. Why? Probably because it seems a little too self-important. He could have mentioned it at any time in that interview with him, saying, hey, come back here and buy some back issues. You know, I'm giving money to charity. He didn't do that. And the humility of that and the kindness of that gesture blew my mind. So I asked this guy, Chris, you know, what is the name of this charity? And he said it's called the Lust Garden Foundation for Pancreatic Cancer Research. So I looked it up and yeah, basically this foundation collects money to go towards, you know, curing this really horrible form of cancer. Uh, I was completely blown away by this, guys. I was actually a little bit shell-shocked. I paid for my books. I got in my car. I had a long drive home. It was like two hours home. And I was thinking about this the whole time, about what a great gesture this was on the part of a comic book store and also how humble it was that he never brought it up. I go all the way home. I tell my wife the story. We like giving money to charities. Uh, we discuss it for a few minutes and then we both agreed, yes, we will donate money to the exact same cause. And that's what we did. And that, guys, that is why more than any other reason I wanted to talk about Nick's comic strip on my channel and give a little bit more attention to them, put a bigger spotlight on the comic book store. I think what they're doing is fantastic. Oh, and by the way, it's a really, really great store. So for all of those reasons, I am emphatically saying that if you are in the metro Boston area, you know, greater Boston or anywhere in New England for that matter, basically you got to go check out Nick's comic strip in Danvers, Massachusetts. As usual, I'll put a link down in the description to their website so you can check them out for yourself. Hey, I'll also put a link down there to the Lust Gotten Foundation if you want to read about it or if you feel so inspired to make a donation yourself or to any other charity of your choice. Um, if you're going to be at Wicked Con in Boston this weekend, um, look for Nick and his crew uh, at their booth. Also, keep an eye open for me and Jack. We're pretty excited to go. And hey, if you bump into me anytime in the foreseeable future at a comic book show or a flea market, I will have a stack of these until I run out. These are 20% off coupons at Nick's Comic Strip. I am very happy to give these away and try to steer people through their doors. Oh, and by the way, guys, I got some pretty great comic books at this place. So before I show you guys what I got, you know, if you like this sort of stuff and you want to support the channel, go down, hit that like button. If you know anyone who actually would also like this channel, feel free to share my channel um, as well as, you know, consider subscribing. Also, you can find me on Instagram under Lunch Money Comics IG. All right, guys, let me show you these awesome comic books I got at this comic book store. So the first comic I'm going to show you isn't a comic at all. This is a comic book print. So this is a print by Alex Cormack, signed by him, depicting Nick uh, in this homage to Amazing Spider-Man 300. Now, I got this because Alex Cormack was there the day, that first day I went. Um, they do this sometimes. Nick's comic strip brings local artists and writers into the store. He was there signing his books, doing these cool prints. I thought it was pretty neat and a fun thing to talk about. All right, now let's talk about the back issues. Like I said, they were priced really well to begin with and then they were 50% off. So let's start with this one. This is Morbius number one. I believe it's from 1992. And this is part three of the six part Midnight Suns storyline. So I've talked about them in the past, but the Midnight Suns were a team of, you know, sort of monster and occult and magic themed superheroes that got together to fight even bigger evils. They were introduced in the six part series, which crossed multiple titles. I had all of them except this one. I was looking for it and I found it. Best part is, it was listed at $3, so I got it for a buck fifty. It's still in the poly bag with the poster. I think it's an absolute steal for that price. I'm happy to finish my Midnight Suns run right there. This next one's kind of fun. Uh, I've talked about the new X-Men on my channel in the past, and this is number 127. Not a key as far as I know, but it depicts the character of Shen Zorn on the cover pondering a cheeseburger. And the reason why that's a kind of a funny cover is Shen Zorn doesn't really have a face or a mouth. 
He can't eat a cheeseburger because uh, he is a mutant who has a star for a brain. Now, Shenzorn is a cool looking character with a very convoluted backstory. Namely, he wasn't really supposed to exist. So let's go back to this time in the early 2000s. Grant Morrison writes this character. He's at Xavier's school. He seems to be a major new X-Men mutant character. But in the storyline, it's eventually revealed that it's really Magneto in disguise. That Magneto had infiltrated the X-Men. He was doing some sort of long con to beat the X-Men. Doesn't matter. He re revealed to be Magneto. He ends up being killed. Magneto's dead, and Shenzorn wasn't real ever. Well, there's a problem there. One, people grew to love Shenzorn. They really liked his design. And two, X-Men books are better with Magneto alive. So even though that was Grant Morrison's intention all along, the Marvel editors did not like this, and they basically retconned the whole thing. Instead of Magneto impersonating this Zorn character, they flipped it around. Zorn was actually pretending to be Magneto, and Zorn really did die. But that's okay, because he has a twin brother who looks exactly the same, except he has a black hole for a brain, and Magneto's been alive the whole time. Uh, because comics. Right, guys? Crazy stuff. Still, really cool cover. I love uh, Zorn's character design. I thought this cover was funny, and it was like a buck. Had to have it. Okay, I have my Uncanny X-Men uh, fillers here. I'm still trying to fill in the run. Uh, I'm gonna go through these really quick though. Uh, almost done with it. So here we go. We have Uncanny X-Men number 146, just a really cool cover featuring Arcade. Then we have number uh, 148. This one actually is a uh, key issue. It's the first appearance of the character Caliban. He's an albino mutant with the ability to track other mutants. Um, and you might have seen him in two different X-Men films. He was in X-Men Apocalypse and also uh, in the movie Logan. So pretty cool there. Then we have number 149. I don't think it's a key. I think they fight the living monolith in this. Not entirely positive. And then we have number 155. This one is a key. It's the first appearance of the alien brood as well as the brood queen. Very cool. Great cover art there. Okay. Now we've gotten to the Silver Age books. So up near the counter, they had a pretty awesome box of Silver Age comics, but they were really low grade. But because they were low grade, they were priced really, really well. And like I said, they were giving me 20% off on my first purchase there. So um, I got all these significantly cheaper. So let's first talk about the books you saw in the footage that I did not buy. There were lots of early Fantastic Four, including the first appearance of Puppet Master, the first appearance of Molecule Man, which I did look at very closely. It had a pretty big tear on it. You saw Daredevil number three, a book I really want for my Daredevil run. And honestly, I'm, I'm kicking myself for not getting it. Um, it did have some issues with some staining uh, and markings. Also, some of the folio pages on the inside had pulled away from the staple. Still, guys, I would have got it for like 80 bucks. I'm kicking myself. Should have got it. Um, you also saw me look at an X-Men number four, first appearance of Quicksilver, uh, Scarlet Witch, and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Um, they had a pretty good price tag on it. I still think it was a great price. Um, I've been dreaming about that book. So I did not get that. Maybe someday. But these are the books I did get, and I'm very, very excited to show you. The first one is this. This is the Fantastic Four number 51. It's from 1966, written, of course, by Stan Lee, art by Jack Kirby. Awesome Jack Kirby, and I believe Joe Sinnott cover. And this is a very famous story for Fantastic Four, and especially The Thing. It's called This Man, This Monster. And what happens in the story is a bad guy steals things' powers, and for one day, he reverts back to his human form. I'm not going to tell you what happens in it because I think you should go read it. It's the best thing story ever written. It's absolutely fantastic. Go find it either digitally or find a reprint of it. It's absolutely worth reading. Uh, I've always loved this cover. I think it's a fantastic looking book. Um, the funny thing about this too is uh, it's number 51. This is right in the middle of a huge run of gigantic keys, right? Numbers uh, 48 through 50 are the first appearance of Silver Surfer and Galactus. And number 52 is the first appearance of Black Panther. But this sneaky, really good story is kind of hidden amongst those really giant keys. Um, here's the thing too, guys. There were two copies there. One of them uh, had a detached cover and they were asking 40 bucks for it. Then there was this one. And this one does have some issues. You know, it's a little beat up, a little dirty, some color breaks. But the cover is attached. The only problem is at the top staple, uh, the back cover is pulled away a little bit. Still, it's attached. And the sticker price on this was $60, so I got it for a little over 40 bucks, which I think is a fantastic deal for this book. And I'm very excited to own it, and I also want to put it on the shelf behind me. Actually, all of these books I'm going to show you, I want to put on the shelf behind me. So there you go, guys. Fantastic 451. Very, very cool. Next up, we have a couple of X-Men books going way back. Um, this is a book I've wanted for a really long time. It is X-Men number 11 from 1965, another Stanley Jack Kirby comic book. If you go back to the early X-Men books, guys, they're all expensive. And if you kind of go numerically up from one, the first like real affordable one you come across is this one. 
Now, this is a key issue because it's the first appearance of this guy right here, the Stranger. He's a cosmic powered being who basically has all of the knowledge and powers of an entire alien civilization. Uh, he visits Earth because he's sort of a scientist and an explorer in both the X-Men and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants um, think he's a mutant and are basically trying to see what's up with him. Now, what's always appealed to me about this book, despite, you know, besides being a really early X-Men book that's affordable, is this cover. Guys, this is a weird cover. Uh, it's framed oddly, right? The stranger is just kind of floating above the street. The X-Men are kind of oddly in the foreground. But what always jumped out to me was the building in the sky. I love this building, this very ominous edifice behind the stranger, very post-war looking. I just always love this book whenever I saw it in comic book stores. And uh, that with the red sky, I just absolutely love this book. I've been looking for it for a long time, but it's a, still a little pricey. Well, not in this case. This book right here had a sticker price of $50 and I got it for 40 bucks. Why was it so cheap? Well, because there were some drawings on it. You see there's a little sticker on the back saying there's drawings on page three and the last two pages. Now I looked at those drawings and they weren't on story panels. They were in ad pages. Not only that, but they were kind of cute, right? Like a little kid clearly back in the early 60s did some doodles in his comic book. And I don't think they're really intrusive to the story at all. Uh, I actually think they're quite charming and sort of place this book in a date and time that I thought was pretty cool. And the ones on the, the back of the book, you can barely see anyway. So it did not affect my love of this book. I had to pick it up for that price. Very happy I got it. All right, and we have one more X-Men book for you guys, and it's a great one. This is X-Men number 35. It's from 1967. This was not written by Stan Lee uh, or Jack Kirby. Uh, this was actually done by Roy Thomas and Werner Roth did the art. Uh, and uh, it depicts Spider-Man and the X-Men. And a lot of people think that this is the first meetup between Spider-Man and the X-Men. It is not. They met earlier than this, but it does depict a battle between Spider-Man and the X-Men. And listen, guys, whenever Spider-Man is fighting good guys, it's almost always a misunderstanding, and this one almost comically so. It's also the first appearance of the character Changeling. Now, Changeling may not ring a bell for a lot of you, but anyone who watched the X-Men animated series in the early 90s, you saw him by another name. The character of Morph, who basically shows up right in the very first pilot of that show and is, you know, killed off. He comes back, but he seemingly dies in that first episode. That is the same character as Changeling. They just renamed him, and then he appeared in comic books subsequently to that under the name of Morph. So there you go, guys. Fantastic cover um, showing the X-Men and Spider-Man. You get a first appearance in there. I absolutely love this. I adore it. I've been looking for this book for a long time. The sticker price was $80, so I got it for like a little over $60. An absolute deal for that price, and I'm very, very happy to add this to my collection. So there you go, guys. That was my experience at Nick's Comic Strip in Danvers, Massachusetts. I got some great comic books there. Go down to the comments and let me know which of my pickups you like the best. I'll hold up my three favorites. I can't choose a winner among these. I'm happy to have all of them at the price I did. Very happy to add them to my collection. But guys, far more than the comic books, um, for me, was the experience I had in meeting Nick and all of those guys that work at that store. Obviously, they have a great thing going on there, and I love the fact that People in our comic book collecting community are finding ways to give back. And honestly, guys, I'm just mentioning all of this to you because I feel like in some small way by mentioning it to you that I am paying that charity forward. Maybe some of you will be inspired as well. Hey, if you're lucky enough to live in New England, definitely stop by Nick's Comic Strip. Hit those back issue bins and know that not only are you filling in your comic book runs at a cheap price, but a part of what you're paying is going to a really good cause. Uh, once again, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Keep hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places and your local comic book stores. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.